let's hop into the time machine. Crypto is crazy. We're going back to 2018. You got Jimmy Song, Bitcoin maximalist par excellence. You got Joe Lubin, <laughs> Ethereum co-founder and major funder of many an Ethereum project. They're at Consensus, Coindesk's flagship conference. They're on stage and they agree to what they later describe as a max pain bet. Let's see a clip from way back when. More and more of the world will take Bitcoin as, uh, as sound money and store their value in it. And that's, 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 uh, that's, what, that's it, the major thing that's going to change everything else. If we can come up with some crisp criteria, I will bet you any amount of Bitcoin uh, that you're wrong. What kind of criteria? We wanted a maximum pain bet. So if Joe's right, then presumably Ether will be much more valuable right. than Bitcoin. So I would have to pay him, him Ether. And if I am right, presumably Bitcoin will be much higher than Ethereum, in which case he would feel the pain. Yeah. So it's a maximum pain kind of bet. Skin in the king, right? Yeah. Like that's, right. that's the idea. All right. So as flagged by former Coindesk reporter Brady Dale, as seen there in that video in conversation with those two gentlemen, the end of that bet, the end term of that bet, end of this month, 2023, that was when the bet would get settled, according to the agreed upon terms. Now, the bet was whether or not there was going to be more active users on Bitcoin than on Ethereum, et cetera, et cetera. And so what Coindesk has done has gone back, looked into the data and seen, at least according to the best of our ability, who would have won that bet. It looks like maybe Joe Lubin on the Ethereum side would have won it by a nose, but even that might be disputed. And I don't think we have a clear winner. I'm going to throw this back to Will because it is a nice little history corner. That is some good content when you get an on stage bet. How High stakes bet agreed to by two prominent figureheads. What's your take on this? And what does it say about where we are in the industry five years later? You can't program that content and events. That's just spontaneous. Great stuff from Coindesk there. I love that. Great stuff from Brady Dale. Shout out, Brady. Uh, yeah, I think this sort of brings us back to like the early days of Ethereum, honestly. So like wind back the clock 10 years from now and five years from the placement of this bet to 2013 of uh, Vitalik thinking about what could be possible on top of Ethereum. If you go into the white paper, you go some the early documentation looking at what he was thinking of. It was like a lot of different use cases, right? And Joe lube and bought into this. So whether it be financial contracts like we see with DeFi, Oracle services like we see with Uniswap or Chainlink, or even really weird things like agricultural hedges and financial products for agriculture, that was an idea as well. And all these things needed users at some point. And so that was sort of like the constraint here. Did Joe Lubin see that there was going to be users and did they were those users like enticed to be using a decentralized application for all these different use cases? And on the other side of this, the bet, Jimmy Song is thinking from a Bitcoin maximalist perspective, no, a blockchain really only has one function and that is for moving money around. And Bitcoin, therefore, is going to be a little bit better. Uh, that Bitcoin argument really hasn't changed too much over the years while the Ethereum argument has sort of moved so much, right? So 2018, no one really saw the rise of NFTs. I bet you that in the top five applications we're talking about for this bet, OpenSea or Blur is going to be in there. That's not something I think Joe Lubin or anyone else would have really called out. They would have called out something else. But there's a lot of different applications on Ethereum right now that I think do fit this criteria. The question is, does it come down to metrics that you can really measure? I think there's going to be some disputes on either side for this one. Wendy, I'll throw it to you. I think that this is an interesting story and it's kind of fun. Um, fun fact, I had Jimmy Song on my show like a million years ago. I think it actually was 2018 and he was always very combative, but like very, very nice guy. Um, I don't think that anybody was going to really fully think that NFTs were going to do what they did. I, like when I saw them coming out, I want to say it was like 2021 when we had like this NFT market, like this NFT boom. I was kind of surprised to see them actually be used, especially by so many people. So I think it's an interesting story. It's fun. But again, and I, I also didn't see that BRC20 tokens and ins inscriptions on Bitcoin happen either. It's just kind of something that came out of the blue. So this go does go to show that people who are getting laid off maybe are building some cool stuff. Jen? I know. 
It's the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, this, these innovations come from hard times. I want Lubin to win this bet, but I think if we look at the terms, which were not written down, I think what we can learn from this is write down the terms of your bets so that they are easily verifiable later when you go to cash in your $500,000, which is, which is now more than doubled. Uh, I want him to win, but some of the dApps that are outlined in this story don't really fit the dApp criteria. You know, one is wrapped ether, I think tether and circle are in there and there's some con contention back and forth on whether these um whether these can be constituted as dabs. Zach, i'll give you the last word before we move on though i mean the the we're still early remains true here and is pretty sad in my opinion right like i think like probably these guys would have imagined that this would have been decisively decided by this time and, it, and it's and it's not it's very much not it's very much in question i think coindesk to its credit did a great job of tracking down different opinions in this piece and saying okay well this one isn't that this one this one isn't etc cetera, etc cetera. so it is like you know it is quite shocking that there is this little monthly active user base on a lot of these on-chain applications uh five years after this bet was uh first proclaimed but yeah we're still early you know for better or worse